Well, hello. Welcome to CP Time, the only show that's for the culture. Today, we'll be discussing black classical music. Now, I know you might be thinking that classical music is just for old white men whose hair looks like they spent a day inside of a tornado. But black musicians have an often overlooked history of contributions in the classical music space. Take our first musician, George Bridgetower. Born in Britain in 1778, George was a young musical prodigy driven into show business by his overbearing father, the 18th century version of Joe Jackson. Well, you better get back in there and learn that violin. Before George was 10 years old, he was performing for kings and princes all over Europe. One concert was even attended by Thomas Jefferson. It's rumored that Thomas Jefferson was so impressed by the talents of this mixed race baby that he was heard saying, maybe I should make one of these for myself. Rich Tower was so famous that Beethoven himself even wrote him a sonata, which they performed together in 1803. On the sheet music, Beethoven wrote a dedication to George, which read, and I quote, Mulatto Sonata composed for the Mulatto Bridge Tower, great lunatic and mulatto composer. Keep in mind, Beethoven was famous for knowing how things sound. Another black classical musician is Ciceretta Jones, a world famous opera singer from Providence, Rhode Island. Jones toured the world and even performed for then President Benjamin Harrison, who like many presidents from the 1800s, also worked part-time as a mall center. Despite being unable to perform in fully staged operas because of segregation, Jones was still too talented to ignore. She became the very first African-American woman to headline a show at Carnegie Hall, which uh, actually reminds me of the old joke. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? You take the Q train to 57th Street. <laughs> It's funny because it's true. Our next musician, Roland Hayes, the first African-American artist to make a commercial recording, and judging from these photos, the first Mr. Steel Yo Girl. Although Hayes always presented raw musical talent, his career only began because of a workplace accident. His clothes got caught in an assembly line belt and it dragged him through a machine three times, nearly killing him. And while he recovered at home in a full body cast, it was then that Roland started taking singing seriously. Hayes' career took off. And at the peak of the 1920s, he was the world's highest paid singer, reportedly making around $100,000 a year. That's not very rich these days. But back then, that made Roland basically Kanye and Drake. Roland was also the first African-American concert artist to record his own record. He hired orchestras, scored the music, and hired out Columbia Studios, and promoted himself as the great Negro tenor. He would even go through the phone book, and if he found a name he liked, he'd call that name and try to sell them tickets which mean if he didn't call you, your name was Boring. Wasn't no Adam Joneses at those concerts. At the ticket booth, there'd be people saying, two tickets for Mephisto Bolognese, please. So the next time you think of classical music, don't just think of Bach and Chopin. Think of the iced out players like Hayes. Well, that's all the time we have for today. This has been CP Time, and I'm Roy Wood Jr. And remember, before the culture, See if I can do a little bit of what old Roland did here. Pull a name out the phone book. Hello? Is this Charisse Dumont? Yes, can you loan me $200?